Welcome. Today we're going to install the ACK121-5406 emergency locator transmitter in our van's RV6. Dwayne, you have ADSB out. You're next gen 2020 compliant. Arion provides search data for overdue aircraft. All true. However, in Canada, TC doesn't yet recognize the reliability and safety benefits associated with ADSB. So I have until November 25th of 2025 to equip my aircraft with a compliant ELT. Why did we pick the ACKE04 ELT? I did very little research here. I talked to a few friends and then purchased the least expensive unit aircraft Spruce offered that met TC equipment requirements. So this is in no way an endorsement. ACK probably builds a fine product, but I have no experience with them. The unit I'm taking out is an America King AK450-1215 ELT. The unit that I'm putting in will be a basic installation. I will not be enabling all of the features. Let me show you what I mean. Here is where the ELT is located in Whiskey, in the luggage compartment mounted on the wall right behind the passenger seat. ELT antennas should only be installed inside an aircraft fuselage when an external mount is not practical. This is where the old ELT has been sitting for 26 years, and for good reason. Whiskey has a sliding canopy. Because of the movement of the canopy, there is very little space available for antennas. My two VOR ILS antennas are buried in the wingtips. My ADSB and transponder antennas are on the belly. I have one calm antenna on the belly and one directly behind the fuselage. And one of the two WAS-enabled IFR GPS antennas is behind the calm. Nothing can be mounted within two feet of this WAS antenna. So this ELT antenna will be mounted internally, just like the old one, with an unobstructed view of the sky. One more thing, there is some data that suggests that internal mounted antennas are less likely to be torn off during an off-field landing, and I like that. The nice part about mounting in this location is I can just remove the panel and work on the panel on the bench. My old antenna mount looked a little Mickey Mouse, uh, literally connected right to the ELT and then bent upwards. Not wanting to duplicate that, I'm going to make a little antenna mount from 3 quarter flange 6061T6 L angle. Cutting it to length and grinding it smooth. I drilled, deburred, clecoed and riveted the antenna bracket to the aircraft panel. Here I'm marking the drill holes, ensuring the new ELT will be accurately aligned with the direction of flight. So now I'm sitting in the aircraft backwards with my legs in the luggage compartment. I'm checking the placement of the new antenna. Good clear view of the sky and not touching anything with the canopy open and closed. Here is the old remote for the American King ELT. My plan is to mount the new remote right here with the ACK audio alert indicator tucked out of sight behind it. No, there's no nut, there's no nuts on there. It should just come apart. Yeah, it does. Little tiny battery. Oh, let's uh, see what it's all about. A DL one third N positive at this end three volts okay let's see if there's any any life left in that kind of small to hold on to holy crow there's three volts there that is fantastic i have no idea how old this is i'm thinking 1998 good to know so the old remote 26 years old, was still working. Here's the new one. It doesn't come with a battery, so before you install it, you need to disassemble it and install the correct battery. 
This one requires a 6-volt lithium, which is good for 10 years, or a 6-volt alkaline, which is good for 5 years. I couldn't find the lithium in town, but our drugstore had the alkaline. The remote can be mounted horizontally or vertically. ACK provides you with face plates to accommodate both installations. We're mounting horizontally. The audio alert indicator also does not come with a battery. If you lose the manual, the motherboard tells you exactly what kind of battery to buy. This one needs to be replaced every 10 years. Well, here's the old one I just removed. And here's the, uh, the new one. And my gosh, it would be great if it fit the same holes, but I'm not sure it will. Uh, it's lined up nicely there. And this side, not so much. You can see there, there's just a slight little Anyway, I got a little bit of light through all four. I'll make it work. I used a drill to elongate the four existing holes. It worked fine. Nope, well, they're all good. Okay, I can make that work. Now, what I was trying to show here was the installation of the audio alert indicator. However, you're upside down, working in a really confined space with your arms competing with the light source and tools that you can reach and a camera on a tripod. As it turns out, I captured nothing of what I wanted to. The camera wasn't even pointing in the right direction. So just off camera, I have a couple of plastic zip ties holding the audio alert indicator in the vicinity of the pilot's knees. <clears throat> that is installed. Oh. So at this point yeah, I figured I was done. Being smart, I reused the remote cable that came with the America King ELT. So I armed the ELT and waited for the first five minutes of the hour to test the system. And it doesn't work. Still within the top five minutes of the hour, I tested the remote cable that came with the unit and it did work. So now I have to pull out the old cable and put in the new. So I have to replace the cable. So I've ripped up most of the floor and I'm just digging into it now. Um, here's the cable that needs to be replaced right here. So I'm just slowly pulling it all the way out, taking out this next. The hell's holding that on? There we go. Oh, more on the floor. Ah. Oh, replacing this cable is a fair bit of work. Woo. So I'm a little deeper in. I've pulled out this uh, centerpiece here and, and the cover. So I now have full access to the cable that I need to replace. I'll be doing that shortly. This is my electric flaps mounted right in behind this uh, centerpiece here. So, never saw that before. Very cool. Not too horrible to replace if I had to. Good to know. So, I gotta start replacing this cable. Well, I'm still in the process of uh, replacing this, uh, I don't know, telephone cable, this data cable. And I'm not just, I'm doing it kind of step by step here. Um, as you know, as I'm pulling the other one out, I'm putting the new one in and, uh, and then absolutely duplicating the ties. You can see a tie off right here on the inside of a lightning hole, uh, to ensure that regardless of the movement of the stick, that's uh, elevator control there. And this is a uh, roll control, aileron control. You can see that, uh, you know, it's very well protected. So I'm just slowly going through this directly underneath the pilot seat here right now. New one going in, old one coming out, and I'm just gonna keep working along. So I have it installed. And now that the ELT is armed, I'll install the red rubber cover. 
The cover has a center cone that projects down into the switch recess and provides a positive retention of the switch in the armed position. Here you can see that I haven't yet started the reinstallation of the panels yet, but the unit itself is installed. The very last thing that ACK asks us to do is to secure the latches with tie straps. With the installation complete, I waited until the first five minutes of the hour and tested the unit. Good. Everything's working. So, what didn't I do? The ELT may be installed without the GPS interface. This is how I chose to install it. Even without the GPS connection, the 406 ELT provides search and rescue much more accurate positional information. Location accuracy with the older generation ELTs was limited to about 15 to 20 mile radius, or 1,200 square miles. It could take several hours to provide accurate location data. For this 406 ELT, without GPS position information, the search area is about 2 miles, or 100 times more accurate than the old 215. So, if I was to connect it to one of my onboard GPS, it would become even more accurate. It would be accurate within 30 feet. So why didn't I connect it? It's a personal choice. I'm compliant without it. And frankly, I believe ADSB and Arion will be the primary source of search data for any future rescue operation. And I've been using ADSB for over 10 years now. That's my two cents. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.